WWE just made a major change as they will now allow blood and blading in future matches. This is not a drill. This is the gosh darn truth. Blood is back in WWE. This comes off the heels of that epic Hell in a Cell encounter between CM Punk and Andrew McIntyre. We're going to talk about everything we know about this so far, how often we should expect blood in WWE, what it means, and why it actually adds to the product. And it's something that's been missing from WWE for a long time. We're also going to talk about major debuts, potentially, for AEW Wrestle Dream, one that everyone expects, and then one that people may be a little bit surprised about all that much more coming up right here in this video so be sure to smash that thumbs up subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever a new video is released okay let's dive right in and talk about the prospect of blood in wwe for the longest time it has been a taboo it has been something that has been essentially banned from the company vince mcmahon ever since taking the company pg back in 2008 essentially banned the practice of blading outside of a few very specific scenarios and of course when people would just naturally get hard way cut and that happens in matches that it's not something that they can necessarily control. It even got so far as Batista, who used to tell the story of back in 2008 when they originally made the change, he was in a match with Chris Jericho where he felt like the match needed a little bit of color. He needed blood. And after doing that, he was fined somewhere in the ballpark of like $100,000, which is an insane fine. And one of the reasons why Batista ended up leaving WWE just shortly thereafter. So obviously, this has been a, a hot button topic, not only amongst wrestling fans, but also wrestlers. But it looks like we are getting the return of blood. This according to to new reporting from Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Here it is. Let's take a look. This is an aggregation from Cultaholic Wrestling. WWE is now allowing blading for key matches and angles. CM Punk was planned to blade during his match with Drew McIntyre, but McIntyre was not meant to bleed. And this, of course, again... As I said before, off the heels of that epic encounter that those two had in that match, you will notice CM Punk, very controlled blade job, and by the end of it, he was not barely even bleeding. I could not say the same about McIntyre. That was obviously a hard way job in that it was a legitimate cut that was not meant to be a part of the show. He was hit in the face with that toolbox, and it required 16 stitches. It was a nasty gasher on his face or on his head, excuse me, so, but, but regardless, that me, like, this report, and, and what we've seen, um, this past weekend, it means that for not only future matches, but also future angles, blading is back. I know that for many people who may have recently become fans of pro wrestling or WWE, that prospect of blading might seem a bit crazy and insane, but it is something that historically has added quite a bit to the product. And of course, there's ways you could overdo it. There's instances where it's appropriate and there are instances where, you know, it's kind of overdone. I think WWE is in a very good place to find that balance. The the thing with blading is it, it no matter what anyone tells you it does add to the product. Like when you have a big feud like a Hell in a Cell match between McIntyre and Punk, arguably WWE's best and most heated feud of the year, a little blood goes a long way. So for me, like I feel like that is more than worthy of of you know breaking that rule and maybe like getting a little bit of color. Nothing wrong with that. So I think for the future, though, this opens up a reality that has been kind of missing from WWE because we see all these cool wrestlers, we see all these cool moves, we see all these cool, you know, move sets and whatnot. But 
part of the impact, right, in, in real life is, and in movies, which WWE likes to tailor themselves as, they like to think of themselves as movies, is like sometimes people bleed. Sometimes people get colored. Sometimes people get busted open. And it adds to the match. It adds to the danger of people's moves. It adds to the danger of the storyline. It adds to the danger of the situation that they're in. So for the fans, I think this is definitely a plus because it opens up WWE's horizons and opens up what is possible. After years of basically being boxed into, oh my God, these high impact moves that never really seem to make an impact, you know, in certain situations, it's going to do that. And it's going to, you know, be very like readily seen by the fans, like what and what doesn't make an impact. I think that's going to be something to keep an eye on. Other than that, I think for storyline purposes, this also could go a long way. Cody Rhodes is someone who in this new uh, uh, blood bath, era whatever we want to call it this new blood is back era let's call it that the new blood is back era i think is definitely going to thrive he is someone who you know obviously grew up watching a lot of nwa his father and wcw where the practice of blading was very prevalent we saw him do that actually i believe earlier this year in a match with aj styles in scotland so you very well could see the american nightmare cody rhodes be a part of that but we will see what happens Either way, I think this is generally a good thing as long as they don't overdo it, as long as they don't do too much. I think WWE is in a position where this could very much help their product at a time where it is red freaking hot. So we'll see what happens. But one thing I do know that is happening to me is I am going to be at AEW Wrestle Dream And that is all thanks to the good folks over at SeatGeek. Guys, when I tell you that SeatGeek is probably, no, definitely the best place that you can get tickets today, I'm not lying. They rate your tickets on a 0 to 10 scale. They let you know how good of a deal you're getting. They let you know exactly where you're going to be sitting, all the information you would ever need. Go to SeatGeek. If you're going to a wrestling show, whether it's SmackDown at Barclays, which I will be at, whether it's AEW Wrestle Dream tomorrow, which I will be at, whether it's, I don't know, damn Grand Slam, which I will not be at, but, you know, if you're going to a wrestling show at any point, SeatGeek is the place to go, and I can get you $20 off your first purchase when you sign up using the promo code real take yes that's a free twenty dollars towards your first purchase on seat geek when you sign up using the promo code real take all the information you need where to download the app all that stuff in the description below just use that link use the information and the promo code real take all right and speaking of AEW Wrestle Dream, that's a show that I'm going to be at in the Tacoma area. And it's a show that could see the debut of a former WWE world champion whose name is the almighty Bobby Lashley. Lashley looks set to debut for AEW as both MVP and Shelton Benjamin have come into the company. It was reported by FightfulSelect.com that Lashley, Benjamin, and MVP had all signed contracts with AEW a number of weeks ago. We've seen both MVP and Shelton show up. Last missing piece of that puzzle, of course, is Lashley. And there just so happens to be a segment set for AEW Wrestle Dream, including Swerve Strickland, Prince Nana, MVP, and presumably Shelton Benjamin, and also presumably the almighty Bobby Lashley. So over the last couple of weeks, obviously, MVP has been making overtures towards Swerve Strickland, trying to basically steal him away from Prince Nana. Nana has been very afraid that this could become true. Swerve is going to be answering the call. He's going to be in the ring. And he was actually on um, O'Shea Jackson's show this week, and he was talking about this segment, and he said, you know, I'm not just there to talk. I'm there to get physical. So... It seems like not only is there going to be the segment where Swerve will likely have to make some sort of a decision about his future with AEW or his future, I should say, with Prince Nana, but I also think that he's saying, like, look, 
Things are about to get intense. Things are about to get physical between likely him and Bobby Lashley. And, you know, this is one of those things. Like, I said that Lashley versus Swerve is one of those matches I didn't know I wanted to see until I heard, like, that it was possible. And the second I started thinking about it, I was like, oh, wow, this is going to be, like, off the hook. This is going to be insane. Like, you have Bobby Lashley who, like, again— 48 years old looks like he's like 30 <laughs> like built like he's like a greek god all this stuff and and you have Swerve Strickland who's in the prime of his career who is doing the best work of his career on the best run of his career like th- these two are on a collision course and I think that you know whether it's full gear or whatever pay-per-view they end up doing it at it is going to be an epic encounter when those two step into the ring you add MVP into the mix you add the the fact that Swerve would likely have to go through the members of the Hurt Syndicate, which is what they're likely going to be known as in AEW, that adds an extra wrinkle to the storyline. And I think it's a very good, you know, kind of side quest or, or distraction for Swerve while he's not in the world title picture, but makes him seem important because he's going up against a former world champion. So expect that at Russell Dream. I would expect that. I would say like 99.99% chance Lashley ends up showing up at Russell Dream. The other person that people have been speculating could, might, or would show up at Russell Dream is obviously Shane McMahon. This is something we've kept a very close eye on on the channel. Here is what I will say. I personally do not expect Shane McMahon to show up at Wrestle Dream. I do not expect him to get involved. I do not expect him to be there. I do not expect the storyline to call for him to be there. That being said, you never say never. You never know what could happen. You never know what Tony Khan might have up his sleeve or might have planned. I would say the likely scenario is if Shane does show up in AEW, it would be at world's end. I just think with the TV deal ending at the end of the year and the new one starting at the beginning of the year, they want to get, you know, as much of a boost in ratings as possible, especially with the max integration for the simulcast. And then also, I I think like, you know, Wrestle Dream, like it's a little too early. I think you can sell this pay-per-view and, and, and sell this li- like part of the story strictly on the fact that Brian Danielson is going to be forced into retirement or whatever um, when Moxley beats him. If Moxley beats him, I don't know. I'm still rooting for Brian. I'm going to cry when he loses that match. But regardless, objective reporter, commentator here. I think Moxley winning and and you know like ending Brian's career like that is enough to kind of put this over the edge. It doesn't need a Shane McMahon. It doesn't need that. Could we get it though? Possibly. I I think that it would definitely garner a lot of interest at a time where, you know, like The Rock just came back to WWE and, you know, maybe you take a little bit of the shine away from them and, 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 you know, get a boost in AEW ratings, which have not been good. Like you're coming off of a, a, a very bad rating for, but, well, you're coming off of a bad rating, but you're also out of your time slot. You didn't do a good job of promoting the fact that you were going to be on Tuesdays at 9 p.m. and not 8 p.m., but regardless, um, that's the only way I could see him showing up is if, like, Tony's like, I need the ratings. <laughs> but at this point, you really don't. The TV deal is announced. You're already mid-negotiations with Fox to get another show and, and additional revenue streams from that TV deal. Like, you don't need it right now, so... I think that you hold on to Shane. I don't think he shows up at Wrestle Dream. That's my real take prediction, but we will see. There's a lot to break down. There's a lot to talk about. And I will be here, there, there, on the scene in Tacoma, Washington, to talk about AEW Wrestle Dream, to cover it. It is going to be an emotional night for me if it indeed is Brian Danielson's last match uh, as a full time wrestler. I will cry tears of sadness. Some tears of joy, but mostly sadness. Um, Because Brian's my favorite wrestler. And yeah, that's it. But we'll see. Guys, let me know in the comments section what you guys think. Who do you want to see show up at AEW Wrestle Dream? Do you want to see Lashley? Do you want to see Shane? Hell, do you think Adam Copeland makes his AEW return at Wrestle Dream? Also, let me know what you guys think about Blading being back 
in WWE? Does it add to the product? Is it dangerous? How do you feel about it? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, be sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever a new video is released. And until next time, be happy, be healthy, and as always, keep it real.